All right, we'll see if that's a stable spot for you guys to sit for right now. So. We need to go pick up some gas. Nope, change spot. All right, let's see how that one works for a minute. Ugh. All right, guys, so we're gonna go pick up a, oh my gosh. Doing all this struggling just to say one thing. So, we got the truck loaded down. We're going to head over to a buddy of ours to pick up a boat. And technically the boat is going to be free boat, which is the best price for a boat. Um, but here's the deal that we're making with this buddy, okay? As many of you guys know, we do custom automotive and marine upholstery and canvas and so on. Um, and in that comes with woodworking and fiberglass work and all sorts of craziness, okay? So pretty much we have the ability to, well, at the end of the day, build a car or boat from ground up and do some pretty cool things with it. So this buddy of ours, you know, he's paying quite a bit for storage every month. And um, he originally offered if, you know, to see if I was interested in buying the boat. And honestly, I don't need more projects, okay? I don't need to have any more expenses. I don't need to buy anything else. But I decided, you know, I'd really like to help this friend out if he was going to sell me the boat at such a low price um, just so he didn't have to pay storage fees and registration and all these other fees that, you know, come with having a boat that I should do whatever I can to help him out. So what I offered him was that I would take the boat and put it in my name um, and instead of him selling it to someone and then not having a boat, if he does want to go out on the water, that... Uh, I would put a bunch of, of my time and some of my materials into it to rebuild the boat from ground up and make a really nice boat and he can use it absolutely whenever he wants. I live between him and the lake and honestly if the boat's sitting there and he wants to use it he can take it and go. Um, it's a good deal all around okay I don't have a bunch of upfront, uh, upfront costs to buy the boat which it wasn't a lot guys. He was really making me a killer deal from the get-go. Um, but the big thing is, is he can still take it whenever he wants to take his family out on the water. So that's the plan. We're going to go pick up a free boat. And, uh, yeah, got a little bit of a road trip ahead of us for that. But it'll be fun. Now, I did get a call this morning because it's the uh, 30th of the month. And if he gets it out of storage by today, he doesn't have to pay the next month. So I did get a phone call this morning that he said the tire on there is, you know, he said it needs replaced, okay? I don't know if it's just flat. I looked at the picture he sent me. Honestly, it looks like it could have just gone flat and then with the rain and storms we've been having, it looks like it's kicked a lot of dirt, grime, and whatever else up onto the tire and it looks rough. Um, but I can see some, some weathering, some cracking in the rubber itself around the edge. I can take back roads all the way back home, um, so I don't really have to take it on the highway or worry about high speeds, but I did grab a tire off of my boat trailer. My boat trailer is a 15 inch tire, his is a 14, so I'm not sure, you know, if I, if I don't have to use that tire, I'm not going to. Some of the other things we're taking with us is I'm bringing my jack, which we just got a brand new jack today because my old jack failed. To be fair, it was like one of the cheapest low profile jacks from Harbor Freight. And it lasted me probably seven years or so, okay? And I've done a lot of work with that with that jack. I've built race cars and torn stuff apart. And I mean, I heavily used it for seven years and it just now failed. So we had it over to Harbor Freight and I bought the most expensive jack Harbor Freight offers. So we can test that out. You know, it's their Daytona Professional Series, uh, their low profile high lift jack, okay? I'll tell you right now, that jack is much heavier than the other jack. It's much larger than the other jack. And the hope is, is that we can use that jack as well on our race trailer. Say we, you know, a tire goes flat or something, we can get that race, that side of the race trailer, that corner lifted up and, uh, you know, get, get something under there. I know, I know that, you know, with a car in there especially, but even by itself, it might max out that jack. I don't know the weight off the top of my head and I didn't, have, didn't check the paperwork. 
I mean, we bought it. We just put work into it. I, you know, I'm not sitting around memorizing the build sheet on this thing, okay? Um, but I need to check the weight on that, see where it's at. But, you know, if I have the ability to even try to lift it, I'm going to. We also carry a bottle jack in there to lift that up. Um, but it's the idea of having a larger, flatter platform that if it'll lift it up, it's much safer than a bottle jack and much, much safer than a screw jack. So, um, that's my talk on jacks today, I guess. So we're bringing our jack, we're bringing the compressor, which before we left, I made sure it was full. Just a small roofing compressor, a pancake compressor, but it will get air into a tire. And that's the big thing that we're concerned about right now is, you know, packing some air into that tire if, uh, and see if it, seeing if it will hold, you know, at least long enough we can get over to a gas station or whatever and fill the thrust way up if we need to. But honestly, you know, that little compressor might be small, but it has like, 120 psi in it i i might i can probably pump that tire all the way up honestly um so we got that air hose air chuck um and that spare tire and the spare tire is pumped all the way up i'm not bringing a whole lot out here oh i also have my impact and my impact sockets so let's let's make sure we add that to our list of things that we need to bring so yeah we got a little drive ahead of us it's going to be a nice drive need to stop and get gas so that's one thing who, who doesn't totally love to just fill our truck up with diesel with these prices right and then we'll get over there and check out this boat fun fact this is the same friend who in the past sold me another boat for very cheap because he was upgrading to this boat so when he sold me the other boat I redid the interior in that and sold that to a friend um, and then I actually picked this boat up from him for, for my friend from the lot that he was uh, buying it used from and took it out and we water tested it and did the first float on it. So I actually have, uh, you know, I've been around this boat in the past, but it's been a few years now. I don't know the condition it's in anymore. You know, I heard that it's kind of, you know, rough condition when he was, you know, seeing if I wanted to buy it. So I think it's a good time to be able to strip this boat down Put a little bit of work into it and really see a good outcome see uh you know how it fared out so yeah we're getting up to the gas station let me grab some gas and we'll get on the road and have a good trip all right guys check this out it's an actual rtr mustang and i know it's real because i've seen it at shows and uh let's check this out it's a true rtr mustang i've looked into the car quite a bit i know it's it's insane guys that car is sick, honestly. Shoot, I missed it, guys. Two, 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 six. I missed it. I knew I was coming up on it, and and I missed it. I drove past a semi driver who was like, literally just randomly flipping me off, like for no reason. So I don't know. I just I drove by and he was flipping me off through the window. So I, I got I got sidetracked and I missed my opportunity but uh, this is here let me let me roll these, some of these front windows up this, this is the drive okay this is like the main highway down the, the west side of Ohio this is really how Ohio traffic is okay and I'm not even joking I'm gonna jump on the highway here in a second that goes between uh, between Fort Wayne Indiana and um, Cleveland so you can as you can guess you know that's again a big traffic area but you'll see that there's absolutely no traffic and everyone we've ever had come visit us out here in Ohio is like is like mind blown by that okay so yeah I'll show you this, for this highway you actually have to get off the highway and get on the other highway so that's interesting as well but um, yeah I, 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 well here's another cool thing real quick the, where we're at is actually uh, is actually Lincoln Highway. Actually, let's just take Lincoln Highway over there. Lincoln Highway leads into the town we're going to, okay? So let's just, this right here is original Lincoln Highway, okay? So, you know, we go that way and you go to the coast and we go that way and you go to the west coast. And uh, so a little brief history on Lincoln Highway. I know that wasn't in your plans for today, um, but you know, it's not one straight highway. It's not like what we think about a highway being today. Put it on me for a second it's not like what we think a highway being today it was a link of roads okay sometimes it was you know sometimes it was back and forth through little towns 
left turns, right turns, whatever it would be. But it was one set roadway that led from coast to coast and was the first one to ever do that. Over the years, Lincoln Highway would actually change multiple times. For example, it used to go through um, Lima, Ohio, and now it goes around Lima. See, see historical Lincoln Highway, guys. I'm not pulling your leg here. Um, so at one point in time, it, uh, you know, went through Lima, Ohio, and then they changed it so it went you know, around the outskirts, and I changed it again so it went a little further out. And eventually, at least through this section where I'm at now, it became what's known as the 30, okay, the Interstate 30. But, well, I can't say it became, okay? It was replaced by the 30. Now, here's what you need to know about driving down original Lincoln Highway, okay? Down this road, through across the entire country, no matter where you're at, um, you're gonna find a bunch of small towns that built their entire lives off of travel, okay? This was the main travel road from West Coast to East Coast at the time. So, you know, along this road is where you get, you know, the country's first stoplights and the country's first paved roads. And um, there was a lot, you know, every town had somewhere where you could stop and stay, motels or campsites or simply lots where you could, you know, park your car and sleep. Um, they all had little farmer's markets where, you know, local farmers and, and you know, just general people could bring their things and set up and sell to these travelers. It really was a culture built around travel. And, um, you know, as Lincoln Highway was kind of pushed to the side and the 30 popped up, or New Lincoln Highway, or whatever you want to try to call it, um, when the 30 was built along the side of Lincoln Highway, it absolutely devastated um, these small communities. It absolutely just destroyed what these communities had built up over the years, okay? I want you to think about that for a minute. Your entire community, your entire culture is built around the idea that you're going to have these people coming through for travel and that you're going to have constant flow of traffic. And then they decide they're going to put a highway right next to, you know, following Lincoln Highway and, uh, they're not gonna give you an exit, or you know, there's no reason for people to exit anymore. And um, that's what happens. As we're driving down Lincoln Highway right now, which, ignore my dirty windshield, I don't use my truck often, but you know, as you can see, this is, I mean, it's a highway, guys. And uh, as we drive down Lincoln Highway, when we get to the small towns that still maintain a higher level of, um, of industry, or they had exits, that they were able to at least build something around that. You'll see that they at least lived, um, but the, the the towns that we passed through that didn't get the exits, they didn't get a highway exit, um, they're just destroyed, okay? Oh, if I can bring this up here. Uh, my windshield's just so dirty, I'll try to get that clean. But um, they're absolutely just destroyed, and the entire town itself will is is destroyed so uh yeah i'll talk about that a little bit as we drive down this way i know that isn't what we planned for the video this video is going in so many different directions but you know it's a cool day okay so as we drive there's going to be some old houses there's going to be some old estates there's going to be some old farms um but for the most part the things that we would want to see along lincoln highway have been destroyed so um, I'll show you them as we go, as we can see them, as we can focus on them. My gosh, I actually have window wiper fluid. One thing to keep in mind when you're traveling is cemeteries. Um, cemeteries didn't just pop up. They usually were focused around a small community that might not exist now. Okay, um, same thing with churches and small schoolhouses. Um, those things didn't just pop up. They were... They were focal points at the time for the community. So if you see a small cemetery, you know, even if it's out in the field, um, if you look into that history, there's almost always going to be one of two things. And that's that there was a town or community that what used to be in that place that's just absolutely gone now, or that it used to be a, um, a rich family cemetery that is again gone. So, you know, when you see cemeteries, when you see old schoolhouses, you know, kind of take a peek at that history and see what what was there and where it went, you know? So uh, that's one thing, it's just pretty cool. So yeah, cemeteries. All right, here we go. We're gonna come through one of these small towns right now. Now this one, obviously, uh, you know, it was able to maintain industry. So this is Cairo, Cairo Corporate Limits. So um, 
we're going to check this out. Now some of these houses, when you're first coming in here, check them out, okay? They're not really houses, they're old business fronts that people would convert it into being houses. Because you gotta think, this is the main strip. This is where everyone's business is gonna be happening. So, uh, you know, just check, check them out, right? Because like, right here, well this one isn't a house. They're, you know, they still kept this one a business, but you know, that could easily be converted into a house. But you're along the railroad, so you're gonna have some sort of, um, you know, railroad industry. But you know, all of these down through here, you know, these would all be businesses at the time on both sides of the street. Now, of course, you know, they can convert them into being whatever they want now, but it's just really cool, you know, little community. And as we're coming out the other side, the same thing. You're gonna see, you know, businesses, little churches. Um, that's just kind of the culture that's based around this, you know, is, uh, you know, the ability to, sell or live in your home and create a business um, or live behind your business and um, you know support this this travel focal point you can see that the highways are a little bit bigger um, than some of the other you know it's not a side road you can definitely tell there's some differences here so uh, yeah that was the entirety of that little town that that's how all these little towns are now the big thing is, they were able to maintain industry because of that railway. They also might have an exit onto the highway. That I don't know off the top of my head. Um, as we're getting to the other side of town, we're going to see some more industry. This is where a lot of your campsites are going to be and so on and so forth. So, you know, we have like old, uh, old motor sale kind of places. And, uh, you know, just a whole nother focal point of, uh, of a crossroads, a main highway that probably rent led into Lima and uh you know old vehicles some old businesses and it's just really cool you can see some of these you know the, the old buildings that were definitely businesses at the time and then we're going to get out the other side and we're going to keep on cruising down the road here okay again we got some old cemeteries out here which really just show that that old town probably stretched you know this far out um so that's something to think about. You know, there there might be not be a town there now, but there definitely was a town there at some point in time. You know, this this right here is a great example why I tell everyone they need to get off the highways. Okay, the highways were absolutely just devastating to cultures, to towns, to villages, and the old roads went through all of those towns. That's why the towns exist. If you get off that highway and just come over here onto the the side road or this. You know this old highway if you want to call it that this old main route you can just really discover some really cool things all right um and the worst part is is yes i'm driving just slightly slower so it's going to take me an extra two minutes to make my trip or five minutes to make my trip but the highway is literally right over there you guys see that tree line over there the little tree line that i'm following that, that's where the highway is so i'm going right along the side of the highway i'm not adding any more distance to my trip I'm not adding anything insane to my trip. Um, I'm just following the old route to be able to, you know, really experience and see the old wonders of travel, really. That's what it is. I'm experiencing the, um, you know, what what was built. Ooh, ooh here's a see that little cemetery out there? I don't know if you guys can see it. There's just a couple little, little cemetery stones. There's a couple little cemetery stones way out in the middle of that field. I would guarantee that there was either you know, a major state there at some point in time or even like a small town a small church a small something that was cool that's the kind of stuff that i always tell everyone to look for is this the little things that are way out in the middle of nowhere way out in the field they're so cool really when you think about it all right looks like we're coming into another town up here um let's see if we can read this sign here quick to say snow cruise crash site snow cruiser crash giant site I don't know the history on that. If somebody wants to look that up, that'd be great. Um, I might look it up. I'm not sure yet. I gotta remember, you know. Um, so here we are coming into another town. I don't know what this town is yet, and I don't know if they have access to things. Check us out. Nice little sheep farm over here. Um, this is Gomer. Town of Gomer. So again, we're gonna start seeing these little businesses pop up. You know, we got the grain elevator over here, which is, of course, is a major industry that that really can help keep a lot of these these small towns going. I mean, it's they're surrounded by farmers. 
but we're gonna look at some of these old buildings and see if we can see kind of the uh, the the what am, what am I trying to say the hometown shop side of things you know you can't always see it but you know you got little oh look at that there's a little campsite back there I bet you that used to be one of the old campsites we're gonna come into here and just see what we can see let's do it old house just keeping an eye out for old construction guys here we go we got a little, little shop off here to the right and you can see the sugar creek township hall here a little store right there that's adorable kind of missed that one sorry guys um, i'll do another video later where i come back and really explore some of these towns because this is a part of history that i am just absolutely obsessed with and that's the history of travel okay if you know anything about ohio history of travel is so big here because oh here we go here we go a little town center okay we got some shops off to the left old shops off to the right run all the way back there awesome so i didn't care about any of this history when i was growing up guys so uh you know if you got young kids and they're not showing interest in this guys don't worry about it um i had no interest in history whatsoever until uh, i was already in the military i was out in california i was you know in japan whatever um, and i had to find a craving for that history myself okay and for me it started with um mining it started with gold mining and gold prospecting and um lost mining towns and lost civilizations and then i uh i grew a passion for uh or lost civilizations like the Nordic tribes and you know the Viking era and things like that and then it just came it came full circle to me really appreciating the history of Ohio you know Ohio is not just another state out you know in the Midwest Ohio ha is known for having more than 10,000 ancient burial sites um, known as mounds you know we have the serpent mound but there's like thousands more and we have, uh, you know, tribes that live throughout this region. And we have, like, God, sorry for all the bumps. You know, we had the Black Swamp and we had the, um, the growth and use of, uh, of the canal systems and using boats that led to, eventually, the expansion of some of the first railways. And, um, and the first highway that runs coast to coast. Like, like Ohio has the first stoplights. Ohio has the first paved roads. Ohio has the, has the first, I mean, Ohio was so ahead of its time. The people that built some of the parts for the spaceship, the uh, the shuttle that actually takes the spaceship out to, to out to the launch site, you know, that people from Ohio. I live in the, the hometown of Neil Armstrong and you know, there's a lot of music in Ohio and it's just Ohio guys. So, uh, yeah, with the growth of my interest in history and the growth in my understanding of um, travel and, you know, with the high, with the canals and the railways and, you know, the, this road is specific, you know, especially on top of my craving and my passion for lost civilizations and um, older knowledge, it's become so interesting to me because... Because this wasn't just, this wasn't just like, oh, there, yeah, there's a road that goes through here. Like, roads were hard to build at the time. If you find an old road, old roads were not easy to build. People lost their lives to 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 build old roads because it was so labor intensive and just absolutely terrible. Same thing with railways. Same thing with the canal system. They didn't have the equipment to just simply build these things. If there's a building that is up, it's because somebody really, really pushed to get that building up and put a lot of time and probably their entire life savings into popping up a storefront with the hopes that it was gonna work out. Okay, so, so when you're looking at travel, when you're looking at these old places like this, I mean, keep that in mind, it's just so cool. Like farm over here, okay, it's multiple buildings, you can see right there, look, that used to be a storefront in that building. Did you see it? Well, overhang with the big front windows and the bigger doors. That's an old storefront. That's what I'm talking about. You were traveling along this road and that might be your only place to stop 
for the last five miles to grab a drink or a snack or whatever, you know? All right, I'll, I'll to the next town. Well, I almost forgot to pull my phone out. <laughs> So here we're coming into another town, but what we're seeing is, you know, we if you can see in the mirror, we just actually crossed over the, the new 30. Um, so what we're seeing is where um, a town built a, a highway portal, so to say. Um, they built a small industry based off that new travel. This is very common in the Midwest, where a town will push their, their corporate stuff out by the highway and kind of keep it out of their downtown so it doesn't trash the downtown um this is what we see in you know where i live now is that the downtown and the corporate downtown are very very different and they're very segregated so this is the town of delphis and this is one of the bigger towns that you would would travel through on lincoln highway well okay let me rephrase that this is one of the bigger towns you would travel through on this part of Lincoln Highway. You know, if you were traveling this section here, you know, this, it, it's a port, guys. It's a, it's the place where you want to get your food, get your gas, get all the things you need to keep traveling, you know. I love my farmers, but he's taking all along to get up to speed. Come on, bud definitely way down up here you know when's the last time that some of you guys seen an a and w uh floating burger shop I'll tell you right now they're pretty good too please been there a while it is good i do love me a root beer float you can see here's another little, little ice cream shack that's a big thing out in the midwest too ice cream shacks what's, what's jim selling over here what are you selling over here, Jim? Man, the sun is just absolutely in my face today. You can see some of these old churches back here. Some old construction up here. Beautiful buildings. Now, I'm not going to go over there right now because i got places to be. But if we look off to the left, there are some old-timey looking western buildings that are absolutely beautiful. Delphus does a great job at uh, maintaining their historical downtown. It, just a, an amazing job, guys. Like, I, I can't stress enough, Delphus truly does an amazing job at preserving their historic downtown. Um, I mean, that goes along with a lot of the small towns out here in the Midwest. You know, the ones that have the funds and have the, the cash flow to put back into it, most of them do a really, really good job at, at maintaining that. So I probably should have turned left back there. I believe Lincoln Highway actually goes to the left back there. But what I got to do today, unfortunately, is I got to get over there and pick this boat up because the sun is starting to go down. And, uh, well, I got a meeting time and I'm really pushing that meeting time limit to be able to uh, show you guys a little bit of what it's like to travel through um, historical Midwest downtowns or historical Midwest um, byways I guess is what they want to call it now so uh, it's worth it guys if you if you look on a map look for stretches of road that are going to pass through a handful of small towns and it will almost always be an old um, main trading route or an old main roadway that is no longer being used strictly based on the highway now I know the highway has really opened it up so you can travel, you know, long distances between cities fast. Um, yes, it, it does, it serves that purpose very well. And, uh, but here's the thing. If you just put aside a little bit more time to get wherever you're going, just a little bit, you're going to start enjoying the drive. I think so many of us, lost that enjoyment for driving um i know you know when i was 16 17 18 years old and even a little bit older than that i was obsessed with just going for a drive and just going places i didn't care where i was going honestly drive through the hills drive along the beach drive wherever and i would just drive and uh, i think most of us have lost that passion to just drive so 
you know, all the time I'm making trips between where I'm at and like Dayton or Cincinnati, Ohio or Columbus, Ohio, you know, and they're, don't get me wrong, they're hour and a half drives if I'm on the highway. But I will take an extra, you know, 20, 30 minutes, whatever it is, and uh, take the side roads, find an old road that goes through some small towns, and just take that way instead and stop at a coffee shop or stop at, at whatever, a knickknack shop, a hometown made shop. If you guys know about those, there's a place where crafters can, you know, um, rent a small spot or a shelf or, you know, a, a corner or whatever. And now you have a store full of crafts that are being made by the community. And it's really cool stuff, guys. Um, support those small businesses. And um, most importantly, find your passion for driving again. Find your passion for traveling. You know, the other, you recently we took a trip with, with some family and they were, you know, at first, in the beginning of the trip, they were so focused on where we were going, okay? And I wanted to show them my way of traveling. I wanted to show them what it was like to enjoy the ride, not the location. But at first, you know, you really see it where they were concerned about, well, how long is it gonna take us to get to X destination? We gotta get going so we can get to Y destination, right? Um, and over over the course of a week or so, I really pulled them away from that. I really pulled them into the, look, there's no schedule. We don't have to be anywhere. We don't have, we don't have a schedule. We don't need to go wherever. Um, All right, guys, so we are hooked up and we are starting to head back. We got about, uh, well, GPS says 45 minutes. Honestly, I'm gonna probably take it a little slower. It'll probably be closer to an hour, hour and 15 minute drive, um, just because I don't know the real condition of this, the, the trailer, okay? Um, unfortunately, the trailer doesn't have chains on it and it doesn't have lights on it and uh it looks like somebody he said somebody had backed into the front of the trailer and it and it tweaked the ball all up so of course i'm concerned about honestly how the trailer's attached to the the truck right now okay it's something i'm gonna have to work on so so that's where we're at all right guys change of plans i'm not i'm not down for driving an hour with just how sketchy this trailer's set up so I'm gonna head over to a Walmart. I looked one up, there's one around the corner. So I can, at the very bare minimum, get some chains on this thing. Maybe toss some, I don't know, reflector tape on the back of it or something, you know? Um, Cause right as of right now, I have no backup for safety. And like I said, that ball on the front or the ball hitch is like tweaked sideways. So, I mean, it should hold. It really should hold. I, you know, I got a pin in it and things like that, but I just like that safety of chains and I don't have that right now. So I'm at least gonna run over here to Walmart. We're gonna pick up some things just to make it a little bit safer for now. <coughs> I do plan on um, rebuilding everything after I looked at it, okay? I wanna rebuild, start by rebuilding this trailer. I want to get this interior rebuilt. Um, I'll show you when we get over there. It's, it's, a, it's in rough condition. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys, so. Um, it'll be a fun project to do on the on our channel. So if you want to see a boat get restored, you know, do stick around. We're gonna do some boat things, and uh, let me get over to Walmart, and then I'll show you guys what we're working with here. All right, guys, we're stopped over here at Walmart to pick up some chains and other safety stuff. Right, here's here's what we picked up, guys. So um, let's just come around here and look quick. A nice little baby inboard um, Thundercraft. So it, it's small. It's much smaller than what you think. I mean, if I back up and compare it to, uh, say, like my dually, yeah, my dually and the boat. It's a smaller boat, which is kind of nice. You know, the little river boats are fun. We jump up in here, and you know, like, like we, you know, like I said before, the interior is rough. But there's nothing really great about the interior, but. This little little performance two two five down there is pretty nice. Um, again, the big concern what we have right now while I'm trying to get it back home. Is first off, look at this strap. It's absolutely just brought it away. 
and then uh, somebody had backed into that ball and knocked it sideways and there's no safety chains or anything on here so I think I want to go inside quick I want to grab some safety chains I'll uh, get up in here and grab one of our spare ratchet straps and at least ratchet strap this thing down in the front probably in the rear there's nothing really holding it to the trailer other than that uh, worn out strap so so there she is that's what we wanted to come pick up just a little 2.5 liter a uh, little boat um, honestly we have a v8 that could go in this boat if we wanted to make it much faster but i'm kind of looking to build a little you know we, we do emergency response search and rescue type stuff i would love to build a little mini uh, search and rescue boat so we got to figure out some planning on that that's kind of where the idea is right now a small search and rescue boat that we can keep all of our gear on for emergency response stuff so um, I, I think I want to figure out something different for a trailer the trailer is kind of weird it's like a universal trailer actually I don't hate it I don't it's just long in the nose but it's a really not bad trailer okay it gives you a nice platform to stand on and that's actually adjustable front to rear so that's where we're at so I'm gonna go in here we're gonna pick up some stuff to make this a little safer at the bare minimum some ratchet straps or something because I just I can't drive home like this I know it would probably make it I know it would probably be fine but I need to have some safety chains or safety straps and I need to strap that boat down in, either in the front, rear, or both because I don't think that that worn out old uh, strap can really be trusted. I mean, you touch it and you just... I, I can't trust that. Okay, so I gotta go get something. <laughs> so what kind, of, what kind of hillbilly shit did I come up with for back here? So first off, I got some LEDs. Just some headlamps, headlight LEDs. So we have some sort of light source in the back. I think I need to change this one a little bit because I want it to face out, not down. So we're gonna slide this one down to get to the bottom. So we can put that up. All right, we got some LEDs back here. Boat's white, so it should be easy to see. Okay, so that, that answered that question on the real lighting. Going down country roads, guys, I probably ain't even going to see another car, but I just wanted to be sure. Now, for some hillbilly uh, chains, because Walmart did not have a set of chains for some god-awful reason. I don't understand why they don't sell chains. Uh, I went from, from the hook back to the trailer, around the top of the boat, back to the trailer, back to the hook. These need to stay loose, so that way, you know, when you're turning, they don't get tight. But here's my thought on it, guys. You know, uh, if if this trailer does come loose, if something does come loose, honestly, I don't give a, a crap about the boat at that point. I don't give a crap about the trailer at that point. I just want to make sure it doesn't hurt anyone else. So uh, if it starts to come loose, I want everything to be pulled together. I don't care, you know, if the boat comes starts to come loose, I want it to be pulled to the trailer. If uh, the trailer comes loose, I want the boat and everything to be slammed together. So uh, this is the best I got to come up with right now. Um, I don't, I don't think it's the worst thing I've done. Uh, you know, it's just a bummer that, that, you know, Walmart isn't selling, um, well, two things, two things Walmart needs to start selling. They need to sell a, uh, actual trailer chain, something I can loop through that hole where it's supposed to and back to the truck. The only thing I have in there is like a 12 foot, like miniature logging chain. Uh, it doesn't help me guys. They need to sell a smaller, smaller chain, and they need to sell like a blinking red light that you can throw on the back of a trailer like this, like a battery-powered blinking red light for situations like this where we can just all, you know, when we think there's going to be something and it's not, okay? I thought there was lights on this trailer because, well, like, there's the wiring for it, but you come back here and they don't really go anywhere and things are just cut. All right, see right there, look, there's, there's lights back here. It's just all cut. So I thought we were going to have lights for the trip back is what it is but i think walmart needs to step up their uh, options so that way you know i don't care if you're pulling your trailer and something happens like your lights go out uh, i think we should be able to pull into a walmart and pick up some flashing red lights or something to put on the back of a trailer that's just my opinion this is my setup we're gonna get going i'm gonna creep home um i have no reason to rush like i said i'm probably gonna make an hour hour and 15 out of this 45 minute drive but that's that's what we got set up right now is it the best thing in the world? No, but it's what we're gonna do. I should probably add that I do I don't encourage anyone else to do this stupidity thing, okay? Just because I'm choosing to uh 
set things up in this manner doesn't mean you should. All right, um, I do wish that I would have asked about these things before I would came and picked it up. If you're gonna buy a boat from someone, especially if you're traveling a farther distance, make sure you ask about things like that. It sounds dumb. I, in my brain, I'm thinking, you know, there isn't a trailer out there that isn't gonna have trailer chains. Lights, okay, okay, whatever with the lights, but trailer chains, right? So, I didn't ask my downfall. Make sure you ask, guys. Um, so yeah, we're hooked up. I'm gonna get on the road, I'm gonna get home. Nice and slow, we're gonna take back roads where there's no other cars. I know it's gonna to add to my time, but it is what it is. We need to be safe, so that's gonna be the best, the safest option. So let's get home. Let me add one more little thing, okay? When you're traveling to purchase a vehicle, there is always the chance that you'll be pulled over, especially if the vehicle hasn't been registered in a while. It's a very serious chance. Um, for most states, there are laws that say that when you purchase a vehicle, um, you have that ability to travel with that vehicle without it being registered um, back to your home location from wherever you purchased it. And then from there to the DMV. Um, most states, check with your state laws on that. But I know like for my state, and you know I've asked this in the past, in the past um, about traveling with a vehicle that is just being purchased because we purchase a lot of vehicles and you know everything was told i was told at least that uh you have that right to travel with a vehicle once it's been purchased as long as once you get back to your place of residence you do take that in and have it changed over before you drive it after that okay so uh yeah, know your laws, know, know uh, for your location, for your state, for whatever, um, know the legalities of what you're doing to make sure you stay safe. For me, I'm going to keep these titles, the one for the trailer and the boat, um, sitting right up here in my sun visor. And honestly, if I get pulled over, the first thing I'm going to say to that officer is, you know, wh why am I being pulled over when he says there isn't a registration on the trailer or whatever? I'm going to say it's just purchased. I'm on my way back home. Here's the uh, paperwork for that. So it's ready, it's at hand, and uh, you know, easy to grab. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna say to that officer after he tells me why he pulled me over is I'm gonna say, before you run my ID or plates, I do have a CCW, um, and, but I'm not carrying right now. If you have a CCW, just disclose that shit. As soon as they run your plates, they're gonna know you have a CCW. They will treat you very different if you just openly disclose that um, up front, in a good way, in a good way. All right, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna keep moving now. Awesome guys, we just pulled in the driveway so everything worked out good. Took it nice and slow all the way home. And then, uh, you know, anytime there was a car coming up behind us, we just let him pass. Slowed down, got out of the way so we didn't have to worry about that. Oh, so that's a big thing. You are liable if somebody got hurt um, while you were driving us down the road. So that's why I at least wanted to get those couple lights in the back. As you can see, they're very bright, actually. But there we go. Got it pulled in the driveway. Tomorrow I'll come out, take a deeper look, make a plan for pretty much restoration and, and a full build on this thing. So here, in case we didn't get a good picture of that... Uh, the engine earlier because I didn't have lights out so you know the engine looks good on here but hey it'll come together in time so uh yeah hope you guys like my little adventure I know everyone's not you know big on that style of video but you know I want to make content that kind of um I don't know everyone can enjoy so if you like these adventure videos make sure you comment and like um because we do a lot of adventures we do a lot of little adventures a lot of weekends we take off and go to small towns and things like that. We just enjoy the, uh, I don't know, day trips, afternoon trips, those sort of little things that don't cost a lot, but it's like a little mini vacation. So you know, get out there, have fun, and uh, do me a favor. Make sure that you uh, have a good day.